Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So today's system is from the user TechSnack in Discord, I like the name. Their system is called the Venosis system, hope I'm saying that right. Without further ado, let's get into this. So, let's see what they have prepared for us today. It had quite a big description from what I saw, so on the Steam page, right here we go, right. Venosis system. I've added the pronunciations for all of the names. Enjoy. Excellent. This is the home of the Borvolo, a tail-like worm species with one big eye and chunky insect-like uh, mandibles. Uh, they are quite friendly, though. Right. Look at the star. It's actually uh, the first one it's got close to it. So, looking like a red... Oh, wow. I was about to say a red dwarf, but no, that's definitely not a red dwarf. That's one AU. That's more of a red giant kind of guy here. Right. So, the star itself is in its dying days. It's run out of hydrogen to burn its own to a red giant. This is the star... Um, the Borvolo civilization grew up around. Okay, so this system's on the end of its life. It's not, not often people do uh, red giant systems. It's always uh, red dwarfs or yellow dwarfs. You don't often see people use red giants or blue stars or anything like that, so it's good to see a bit of variety here. Okay, so first up, we have got Vu. The only remaining rocky of the inner system. This super-earth has had its atmosphere blown into space and barely inhabits anyone. Yeah, it's not looking too great. 681 average pretty hot yeah that's pretty scorched oh yeah <laughs> so here you go next up we got the belts the two belts are like the asteroid and kuiper belt at Sol, except these ones are more material abundant so we've got some mining you can see some platforms there some uh, stations uh next up we got zesis a high seeing world at unbelievable temperatures like venus but with a surface of ocean nobody lives here not looking good oh yeah not good. It has a little moon as well. Gayo, a capture moon. It's tidy locked and dark grey colour with light shades of blue. A big star. Oh, yeah. Okay. Next up, we've got Flaret. Or Flaret. Flaret. Um, over here. Gas giant. The smaller. Uh, where are we? Uh, it's a shiny white uh, gas giant containing three major moons, two of which are water rich. Very nice. First of the moons, we've got Edol. The smallest major moon in the system. It's covered in craters and has colours of copper, blues, yellows, and pale browns. Nice. Then we've got Zal. Zalf. Once a nice moon that has melted from the red giant in of Vinos. Its atmosphere is nearly all water vapour and contains life of only extremophile bacteria. Research stations have been built around and its sister... Okay. See the research stations in orbit there. Very nice. Next up, we've got War. So it's like the other moon, but smaller. It has an atmosphere of water vapor, but it also has more vibrant blue to it. This world also contains um, exclusive, is it exclusively extremophile bacteria. Nice. Next up, we've got Yeron. Over here. Hey, nice color. Um, it's a golden yellow gas giant, 31% more massive than Jupiter and 42% bigger. Its rings used to be more prominent, but they are nearly gone by now. Nert is the closest major moon to Yeron, contemplating an orbit a little over twice an Earth day. It has typical grey scale colours and tons of higher mountains. Okay, there we go. Looks up, we've got this object here, Nert. It's the closest major moon to Yeron, completing an orbit... A little over twice in Earth Day. It has typical grayscale colours and tons of high mountains. Then we've got Juvol over here. Similar to Nur, it is a small grey rock. It lacks mountains though, instead of having a smoothest terrain with craters. Nice. Next up we've got Ritter. It's an interesting place in this system. The melted ice has turned into oceans with tons of walkable land. Similar to early Earth. Okay. Nice. So a long time ago, this probably obviously been frozen up, but now you've got a red giant. That's probably warmed him up. Uh, next up, we've got Zoe over here. The fourth moon from Yeron, and the biggest out of the five major moons. It has a unique colour scheme of pale reds, whites, and browns. Nice. Next up, we've got this one. Ast Astraeus. Is the furthest major moon of year on. It has craters littering in the surface and colours of whites, light greys and blues. There's a better look at it up in the top there. Because the red giant's tints in the colour a bit. But there you go. Very nice. Good stuff. 
Right, where are we heading next? We done Yaron. Uh, where are we? Oh, I've lost, I've lost my place. Where were we? Yeah, okay, so next up we're heading to Nert. Is that around this barrier centre by any chance? Is it there? That's Baron and Ozo. Where's you? Where's Nert? I can bet I can't see it. Where is it? Is it hidden in that Astro Belt? Where is it? Nert. Where is that? Oh, it's a moon. Okay. I wonder I couldn't see him. Oh, the oh, so we got closer again. Okay. The closest major moon to Yaron, completing an orbit in a little over twice an Earth day. It has typical grayscale colours and tons of high mountains. Next up, we've got Juval. Where's that? Oh, what the heck? That's weird. Juval, there you go. Similar to Nert, a small grey... Oh, no, I already did... What? Hang on, have I lost my... I've gone completely mad. Juval. I'm sure I read it. Oh, I think it's because I reread the gas giant. <laughs> so we did... Uh... Ritter. We did... Yeah, Ritter. I think we need to go to Ritter. That's right. That. Uh, no, then we did that one. Just in black... Uh, is it this one? The furthest major moon has craters lifting the surface of colours. Oh, no, we did that. No, so we are heading to O's. I, I don't know how I lost my place. <laughs> so... Right. That one is the one over here, wasn't it? Had a major brain malfunction there. Right, here we go. So Ozo, Ozo is a home world of the Borvolo. Life on this planet began under the ice when Vianotis was still in main sequence. But the star's red giant heat has reached the planet. Um, the ice melted and life can now thrive on land. You can't see many satellites, you might think, because of the civilization is built underground. The plants here are red and the days are three Earth days, like the binary orbit period. So then you've got Baron over here. It's the binary partner. The two planets orbit each other every three Earth days, with Baron being the least massive one in the pair. It's coloured brown with an atmosphere made of almost CO2, giving it a yellow colour. Nice. Next up, we're heading to this one. Kindard. So moving far away. So Kinder Red. Um, this planet has no atmosphere but contains water and methane ice. The methane line on the surface has given the world a slight greenish colour. It is thought that um, Kierderred was once captured by Spear Yi, but broke free from its orbit, giving it what we see today. Nice. So next up we've got Spear Yi itself. So where are we? Over here, there it is. Lee. Okay, got a station on it. It's a lonely gas giant being the furthest from the star, but it only has a few minor moons. The only major object around it is a giant space in orbit around it. It has a light blue in colour, bands of dark blue and very pale yellow colours. That's a better look of it there. Habitable stations. Or habitat stations, sorry. Ooh, that's pretty custom. I like that. Oh, that's cool. Spherical. Sweet. Since conditions for most of these planets would be terrible to have life on, the gas giant stations use a better alternative than living on the surfaces. This is one such station. Nice. That's cool. That's a cool idea. I've not really seen people do that before. Sweet. Right, now we're heading to Tarok. Lost Planet 1. Where's Tarok? Where is it? Oh, we're heading inwards again. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's a bit confusing. Right. So, this one here. Moving on to all planets, we have Tarok. This grey rock orbits within the Astro Belt of the star and has two moons. Nice. So we've got Zabi, the biggest and closest moon to Tarok. It has colours of grey with traces of slight brown. Being so close to the giant, it has heated up to hundreds of degrees, much like the rest of the close orbiting bodies. Then we've got Rit, the smaller, white moon of Tarok. Um, it's he also heated at unbearable temperatures. It became the moon by being captured. Okay. Next up, we've got Kij. Is that how you say it? This one? Or K Kaiser. That's a weird pronunciation for that one. Um, it's a dwarf planet in the Ashley Belt. It has its days at only 34% of an Earth day. It has a smooth, pearl like surface. At least smooth as far as rocks go, it has no moons. Oh, that's a siren outside. I do apologise. Quite a loud road sometimes. Right. Next up, we have got La Curve. Over here. Unlike all the other dwarf planets, 
Uh, this has more diverse colours. It serves to be painted in very pale reds, grey browns and a very dark grey. A decent amount of craters can be seen too, as well as mountainous regions. It has no moons. It's all by itself. Next up we've got a header. Heda. Heda. Wandering in the rock and ice is a dwarf planet named Heda. Its surface is coloured in dark greys with a few streaks of white. It has no moons. Next up we've got Tegra. T-E, there it is. Got a traveling all over the place. Alright, here it is. It's got a moon as well. So, it's a rocky grey dwarf planet with a rough history. In the past, it was hit by another major body, giving it a giant crater and its strange orbit. The debris from the impact also formed Tigra's moon, which is uh, Minamar. It was a result of debris around Tigra that formed together. Compared to its parent, it is uh, smaller in appearance, meaning it is likely most of the mass from the other body it slammed into. Uh, Tergra in the system. Okay. Nice. Let's have a look at its strange orbit. It's pretty, oh yeah, you can see it's a pretty elliptical and bent. Okay. Uh, next up we've got uh, Slay. S-L-A-L. It's the smallest dwarf planet in the system. Its surface is light grey and it has huge sheets of water ice slowly melting off it. Like uh, Tergra, its orbit has a highly eccentric value. It has no moons. Okay, here we go. Now we're onto the Lost Planets. So, what's going on here? Lost Planet 1 over here. It's in the depths of nothing. It's got a. Oh, oh Lost Planet 1 and 2 are together. Bit of a eclipse going on. The orange gas giant has 91% the size of Jupiter at just shy of 10 Earths. Was a hot Jupiter, it was tidally locked, orbiting in just 1.4 days. As its main sequence ended, it had no surprise that this world got eaten first and fast. Okay. Lost Planet 2. The terrestrial world orbited of 0.95 or every 10.7 months. A lot further than hot Jupiter, but not far enough to avoid being engulfed. It had a pale bluish atmosphere and small pockets of water around the surface. The planet hosted no moons or life on it. As the star approaches its death, the the Borvolo in the far future will have to decide if they should save their star from dying or escape their home entirely. I hope you enjoyed the system. Yeah, it's good. I liked it. Lost planets. There you go. They're pretty far away, though. There you are. That does it for this system, everyone. So, hope you enjoyed it. See, so, yeah, that was the v uh, Gnosis system, wasn't it? The I really apologise if I'm saying that wrong. There it is. But, yeah, there we go. Had a nice little uh, special graphic for it in the... Uh, image here as well which is pretty cool but there we are so that does it for this system everybody so i hope you all enjoyed it like i said if you did let's even go for 100 likes on today's video as well guys also subscribe as well helps on the journey to 40,000 as we are less than a thousand subscribers away now so we're really really closing on it really really appreciate all your support everyone means the world absolutely love it and yeah that all said and done everybody make sure you have a great day stay safe out there and i'll see you in the next video goodbye